So you want to get into tech, but you're not quite sure where to start and you're not quite sure how to maximize your chances of landing your first tech job. I've been in the tech industry for a few years now, and this is how I would use ChatGPT, the AI assistant, to land my first tech job. And I'm going from the beginning, like I'm not even sure which role to go into, all the way to the actual interview. So let's get into it. So ChatGPT is an AI system based on a language model, which basically just means it has been trained on a large, large amount of data in order to process and understand human language. So the way that we would talk to our friends or a consultant or a teacher, it's able to process that and give us feedback, give us outputs and responses. Now its use cases vary all the way from, you know, writing essays for university, people have been drawing up meal plans for their diets, writing code for work, like it's vast, but we're going to go into how we would use it to land our first tech job. So there are some limitations, but I'll go over those at the end and how I would actually, you know, overcome these. So number one, identifying the career path of choice. One of the biggest kind of hurdles, I think, when you're trying to get into tech and your first tech job is actually deciding what it is you're going to do, right? Like you may have come across a few different roles, say a software developer, DevOps engineer, or even something non-technical like product management, and you're not quite sure. I know I had this problem when I was first starting out. So we're gonna use chat and give it its first assignment to help us out. So let's assume that those are the three jobs I'm interested in learning more about and seeing you know where I fit in. I may give chat the following prompt. Give me a table comparing software development, DevOps engineering, and product management. Include things such as the job description, daily tasks, the average salary in the US or UK, career opportunities, yearly job growth, and links to find out more about each position. Here, I'm asking chat to kind of gather up all the information it has on these particular roles and organize it in a way that's easy for me to kind of look at and decide, hmm, okay, that sounds interesting. Okay, can dive deeper into that. And I can also use the additional resources, which will be links to official websites, documentation, books, to get more context around each of these jobs and make a decision. So once I get the output, I'm gonna store it in Notion. So the brilliant thing about chat is it will remember the prompts you gave it, the outputs of that particular session. So I can just go back and forth with it, like, you know, all right, now give me some more information specifically on DevOps engineering or specifically on product management. What does the ideal day look like or the typical day in this particular role? And right, start building out my kind of, you know, my booklet of information or my document of information during this process. Okay, so the next step, let's say I've been here you know, a few weeks, I've spent kind of diving deeper into each of these using chat, using other resources, and I've decided I wanna be a DevOps engineer. We're gonna use this example for the sake of continuity. Well, next then, I need to understand like a key skills that are involved in this role and build out a learning plan so that I can actually acquire these skills. And this is when we're gonna give chat its second assignment. And I would use a prompt, something to the following. Can you write me a learning plan so I can acquire the skills needed to apply for my first DevOps engineering role? Give it to me in a table and include the following columns, skill, a description, beginner certificates and resources to get me started learning. So this is a great way to get started and understanding the skills, the concepts, the tools that are involved in that role. Because when you're starting out, it can be like, I don't know where to start. Like I don't know where to even begin if I wanted to build out my own learning plan. Again, because there's a memory associated with the session, I can then go back and forth with chat and explain, you know, this tool here that you mentioned, or this particular skill here that you mentioned, go further in depth. And again, I can start building out my own, you know, kind of almost workbook or almost textbook for my understanding. And then cross-referencing that information with what I can find online, with the links it's provided me, with like, you know, kind of going deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of those links. One little tip about all of these skills and tools is best practices is a really strong thing to ask chat to give you for each of these things, because there are lots of ways to do things and use different tools and even acquire certain skills. But best practices are kind of like what's understood and agreed upon as an industry standard for certain tools. And that's really a key that I used and that I have utilized when, you know, putting prompts into chat GPT. Okay, so we're kind of getting to grips with the theories, the concept, understanding what the role is actually about. But I've said it before in other videos, experience is king. Like it trumps everything. It trumps theory, it trumps certificates if you're trying to get a job. So now comes time to use chat to build out our portfolio, our projects, and really showcase our experience. So for each of those topics in my learning plan, I would then ask chat to produce projects. All right, I would ask it for me to produce beginner projects for me to showcase those skills. And I can get a list of projects, but furthermore, for each of those, I can ask for the step-by-step -step guide for how I would do that project, right? Say I've never touched something like Terraform in my life and I don't know how to even get started. I can ask chat to give me the step-by-step -step guide for that. 
you know? What do I even need to download? Where do I do this? What to even click on when I'm here? And you can go again, back and forth. If you get stuck, ask chat, this didn't work, or mm, can you show it to me in another way? Or actually, I'm working on Mac, not Windows, and so forth. You can even ask it to give you example code or how to test that code that you're writing. It's really quite extensive what can be done here when you're trying to learn and build out your portfolio. So once you've kind of got that and you're already starting on, you know, your projects or building it out, you can also get chat to, to kind of write the text that would accompany this portfolio. So say you're using a repository, building out your readme file, or if you are saying design, you're going down the design route in tech and you're building out a website, getting chat to write out the, the text that's going to accompany it, your landing page and so forth. So the kind of the whole thing can literally be guided with chat. Okay, so let's assume it's been a few months now, right? Like I've been working on my, my theory, I've been working on the projects. I may even have got a certificate at this point and I'm ready to start applying. Like I feel like I'm ready for that junior DevOps engineering role. Well, now we've got to go into the career side of things. And the first thing I do is CVs and cover letters. So what I'd actually do next is give chat my work experience, education, even the projects that I've done and ask it to build me out a resume or a CV. Given the following information about my experiences, write me a CV for a junior DevOps engineering role with the following categories a profile summary, work experience, projects, education, and technical skills. And it's going to give me some sort of feedback. And then I'm going to use that, iterate over that, and make sure that it kind of reflects what I want it to reflect. It sounds like me. And, you know, again, cross-referencing that with what's out there, you know, CV skills, that sort of stuff, ideal formatting, which, you know, chat isn't as great at that because it kind of just gives you bullet points or tables and so forth. So you may want to look at best ways to kind of present your CV in tech in order to get like the key points straight across. In a similar fashion, I may use it for cover letters. Now I think cover letters are becoming less important, especially the more experienced you are. I don't think I've written a cover letter maybe for two years. But in the beginning, when you're trying to make the case for why somebody should take you on with no experience basically in enterprise or production, these I think can be quite strong then. And so using chat to formulate these cover letters, given your experiences, and given information on the company. For some companies, chat has information on like, right? Things that are quite well known, like a Google or a Microsoft, it knows what that company is. But for smaller companies, it will not know that, right? And so you can just copy and paste, because we know how to do that, from some of their website or from the internet and into chat and say, you know, given this information about them, formulate a cover letter for me. And as always, iterating, you know, reviewing, editing, making sure it does reflect and sound like you is going to be key, right? Just doing, taking the heavy load and giving it to chat. And then you get to do all the, the nice little edits, uh, the rounding off, just the smoothing out the edges. Although sometimes you may just need to like, just delete a whole thing and be like, that's trash. Okay, so CVs and cover letters is one thing, but really one of the most powerful tools you're gonna need in this process of getting your first tech job is LinkedIn, right? Like that is where all the tech recruiters spend hours, hours every day reaching out to people. So you need to make use of it. So here I would use chat to craft my introduction or that kind of summary of my LinkedIn page, kind of getting those key skills across very succinctly. Because I think that's also a challenge in itself is how do I make sure that I get my experiences and knowledge across in the most efficient and effective way? And that's why I think we can use chat. Okay, so chat's done that. We've got our LinkedIn now. What's next? Next is actually reaching out to individuals and using chat to kind of craft communication. So what I mean by this is in your first job or trying to get your first few jobs, who you know is really important. In fact, throughout your career, who you know is important and making connections. So it can be helpful sometimes to reach out to individuals in companies or sending emails or even LinkedIn messages. And again, you can use chat to help craft those messages to these individuals, either by giving some information or just generally, even if you've written something and you would like to give it to chat to kind of review and make it neater, make it sound more formal, less formal, just check, especially maybe if you struggle with written communication, you can get chat to kind of clean and buffer that up for you. Again, I probably wouldn't advise just lifting and shifting, like giving chat something and then just taking the whole thing without editing and reviewing. But it's again, another fantastic resource that you can use to help with the whole process of communicating your enthusiasm and your experience to a potential employer or potential people in the industry that you can make connections with. And the final way I would use chat, once I've acquired the skills, my projects are there, I've built out my portfolio, I've made some connections, right? Like I've got to the interview stage at this point, basically. Interview questions and answers. I would ask chat to provide me with the common questions or the most frequently asked questions in a DevOps interview. 
and some of the ideal answers. But I want to make sure that my projects and experience align with this. So I'm going to actually ask chat to craft some of these answers to the questions with reference to my experiences and in the star format. So if you don't know what star is, it's just like the ideal way of answering questions in an interview, whereby you give the situation, the task that you had to do, the actions that you took, and then the results of those actions. And so getting chat to do it in that format, then you means you can kind of just move that over into your document, your notion or whatever. And you have that to revise from, to review, and also practice. Because the final kind of stage of this, I would say is in practicing with a human, because you will still have to interview with a human. So practice with one, somebody at your home, ideally somebody who's in the industry, who has experience, who's been through this, is gonna be optimal because they're gonna notice things in you know, what you're saying that the normal person, normal person, somebody not in the industry won't notice. Um, and you can even reach out to people who actually offer this service. For example, I offer it for SREs, this interview practice. So that's how I would use chat to get my first tech job. Now there are some limitations. One main limitation that I wanna talk about, and that is chat is only as good as the questions you ask it, which means if you're not a subject matter expert, or if you have no experience in the field already, you will struggle to identify gaps in the outputs or things that aren't quite right or a bit outdated or actually don't reflect how fast the market is changing, you may not pick that up. But the way to kind of get around that, I would say, is the cross-referencing the information, the outputs you get from chat with other sources. That's why I've kind of been on, you know, on and on about validating and, you know, checking with other resources and editing and iterating over things, because it's important that what you are actually working on makes sense in the current, because also chat is only up to date to 2021. And there's also other limitations where it doesn't have individual experiences. And I know this because when I tried it with my own career or my own like role, SRE, there were things in the outputs that I was like, that's great but I would have added like four more topics to this, right? Like four more things I think would be really important to understand. Um, and so that's why I would just say, you know, cross-reference it with things. Also, even if you're not going down the self-taught path, you can use this in conjunction with your courses, your boot camps, even degrees. Like there's definitely people out here who are using this, you know, every week in their degrees. If you wanna know how I got into tech with no CS degree and no experience, watch this video here. And if you wanna know the T on working in tech, what it's really like, what you should know before even applying, then watch this video here. I'll see you in the next one.